Hello guys, uh, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net and in this part of the tutorial series we'll be modeling the hero asset of our bedroom, which is, of course, the bed. It will not be maybe a typical bed, but we'll make a bed uh, made out of pallets. We'll also add some bed sheets, some pillows, so... so. And for this we'll be uh, using some blender techniques, uh, like sculpting, and also a, a cool add-on, which is called uh, modeling cloth. So let's jump into Blender. Start making our bed by uh, a single palette. I made a tutorial on making this kind of photorealistic palette, so if you want to make this palette yourself, just go on and follow the tutorial. I'll also give you a link in the video description below. What we we'll have a look into now is the nodes, material nodes setup. So uh, in the tutorial for the palette we added some dirt patterns uh, with a noise texture so it's generated procedurally uh, using uh, both uh, some factor from the wood texture here and the noise texture with a color ramp. This is where we have the noise texture so the wood is used for scaling the texture somehow. Right now we have just a single palette but uh, for the bed we'll, we'll need some more palettes and to make the bed uh, work efficiently for us. We'll also use some instancing techniques so that we don't like overload the memory with uh, individual meshes and textures. So if you like copy right now, if you copy this object uh, you can see that it just repeats the whole pattern, the third pattern here, just the same. So the thing to avoid in CG as, as much as you can, repetitiveness of textures that gives away that it's fake and CG created. So to get rid of this, we'll just add a simple trick. And this is the mapping. We'll input another node with object info. And there you have some values so these are independent of the instancing of, of the mesh data let me show you quickly how it works we add uh, with a converter node vector mass as we have a vector value here you can see that we plot something like this it already changed the value of the placement here so let's quickly plug it in here and let's plug, for example, the location. And right now, when we copy this object, you can see that the pattern is dependent on the location of our object. I just copied this with the Shift D, so this is an independent, like copied object. Also copied with the link copy Alt D, and it behaves just the same because uh, the factor that's uh, like causing the different texturing here is uh, location so this is the only thing that changes that's okay if you're using the object placed it statically but if you want this for example for an animation and the, maybe the part will be falling down or something like that this is not a good way because you'll have it when the palette will be moving the texture will be moving so so as you can see it's dependent on location and if you want to change the location of the object, for example, in an animation shot, so it's better to use the uh, other values, like for example, the random value. And we can check it out. And now if we go and duplicate, and let's examine this closely. You can see the pattern here is a bit different. So another one, and each instance has a different randomized pattern of dirt. So that's just the way we want this to work. Alt D is just the same. I think this will be just fine and enough for us. Let's take a look at our scene where I constructed this this bed. You can see that each each single palette in this whole construction has a different dirt pattern over it. And let me show you here quickly how I do this bed. So it's all instance and let me start from scratch. So I grouped the palette object and the nails and called the group palette. And in our scene on the bed, we'll just add a simple plane. And uh, the dimensions will be just the Euro palette dimensions. So 0 0.8, just like that. Let's now 
delete only faces, so we have just the vertices. That's all we need. And just uh, switch to auto merge editing so we don't have to remove doubles when we copy. And let's move it on here on the x axis. And there we go. We're going right now for a structure where we will place the palettes on each single uh, vertex. And we'll do that with a hair uh, particle system just like we did in the previous tutorial uh, regarding the uh, placement of the lamps. Let's go quickly and add a new particle system. Let's set it to hair. Let's go to advanced and set up the emitter emit from verts. And let's not make this random but and the number let's set to just the way and just number of vertices let's set it to eight no six yeah we have right now too many vertices so we don't need these we just need six like six palettes it's enough okay let's set up the render to not path but group and let's pick our palette group and you can see it spreads our palettes but the nails are going independently from the from the palette object and that's not what we want so let's pick the whole group and already we have the whole palette let's make the length of the hair to one so that it's not scaled strangely and right now it's so small because the size is set to point, point 0.5 yeah and we want this to be one and right now we have just the right scale but the rotation is crazy so let's correct the rotation and let's set the initial rotation of the object uh, set to object x and there you go and there we have our palettes and you can see that every instance gets a different pattern so just the way we want it. And now we just need to copy the vertices to build the stack of this. The palettes, we need to increase the number of instances because it's fixed. So we need 12. Now we just need this like crown of the bed. Level. Something to put our pillows next to. So we'll just Shift D these and let's rotate this on the x axis uh, y axis 90 degrees and also we don't need this to be two two rows right now because here we needed the height for the bed but here we just need one row so cool and we won't be needing this much elements here so no, no, no. so we have to first make this particle system unique so not using the same particle system for both of these objects and, and also here let's decrease the number of objects to three and we'll put this here, stretch it like that, and we can get here. Right, there we go. We have the base of our bed. Okay, so let's quickly add a mattress and for that we'll just add some basic cube as a base mesh maybe scale it down let's make the dimensions like two meters by two point two meters maybe and the height let's set it up to like point three so it's 30 centimeters high 
and now just to have uh, some geometry for further sculpting you won't be seeing really the bottom of the of the mesh so just singular view we can already like get rid of this face below uh, let's just leave a small rim um, below to make a rounded uh, edge of the mattress and also add some loop cuts to have some basic geometry later on subdivided with the motorist uh, modifiers so let's take care that the loop cuts uh, give us some even square faces so that the geometry behaves well with the sculpting later on now I'll just subdivide it once more and uh, before I continue to sculpt the bed sheet I will uh, unwrap the mesh let's make some seams March seam and now let's unwrap this now we can like choose this island here and rotate it 45 degrees and scale it let's just quickly add a modifier multi-resolution modifier and subdivide our mesh so now let's change the smooth shading let's now go to the sculpt mode and as we're in the sculpt mode we'll choose the crease brush and we can leave the symmetry lock for the x-axis right now maybe we go full screen and just set up our background image to make our sculpt uh, it's better not to use uh, just a regular mouse so let's switch to the tablet and that's really recommended if you go for sculpting in blender it's uh, super useful and here you can set up the sensitivity of the strength and radius and stuff so you can really have some control over how much you strength you put in the wrinkles you create right now i can see that there's some strange things going on with the geometry so let's add another subdivision level so let's start our sculpting of the details um, you can use uh, control to change uh, the brush mode from add to subtract so invert the brush it's really useful and you can use the F button to control the size of the brush. Yeah, and just just turn on some music and enjoy the process. So have fun with it, experiment. You can always uh, correct some things along the way so need some practice to get this done the way you want so it's a little bit time consuming but you'll get to faster results as you as you get used to this to these tools quite uh, it's quite useful to also have some reference uh, by your side so if you have a second monitor or maybe you can just like print out some photos of the fabrics so you get the idea of uh, how they behave generally the general rule is that uh, fabrics are you no know, uh, have wrinkles along the uh, the tension lines so where you, when you stretch something it causes like it gives the direction to the wrinkles and 
I usually go a little bit overboard with the sculpting and then just like correct it with a, a smooth brush. Also you can use the symmetry locks to, so that you don't have to sculpt everything from scratch. So, uh, well, in the final stage, I all uh, in the final stage you might uh, wanna like decrease the symmetry effect. So turn the symmetry lock off and add some details afterwards. Yeah, it requires a lot of tweaking and checking and some patience, but it's also a lot of fun, really. So it's also good to turn on the matcap to have a better view of what you're doing, of the especially if you're looking for finer details. So use uh, different sizes of a brush for different levels of, of detail. Now let's add a material to our bed sheet. Let's create a material, call it sheets, and let's set up the principled shader with textures. Just a simple, simple bed sheet material like this one. And let's right now try and see how it looks like rendered. So let's also have a look at the texture previews to, uh, to check the scaling of the texture and you can see that uh, it's like pretty much too big so we need to scale the UVs to make the uh, texture of fabric a little, bit, a little bit smaller. Let's scale it up six times. Yeah, right now it's looking a lot better. So 
So now let's add pillows, and for that we'll use uh, an add-on called Modeling Cloth. It's made by Rich Coburn. His account on GitHub is uh, the 3D Advantage, uh, so you can find it uh, on GitHub. Just search for Modeling Cloth and uh, install this from the zip package, or you can use uh, the link in the video description below. Once enabled, you have an additional panel here called Extended Tools, and this is the Modeling Cloth panel. Okay, so let's create an empty scene to make it work faster and create our pillow as a separate asset. So let's quickly model a basic mesh for it, just extruding the plane, subdividing this, and giving it an edge, and maybe basically smoothing. So we already have the basic shape, and let's give it the model cloth. Thing, and let's increase the inflate value and let's press continuous update. Let's for now turn off the object collisions. And there you go. If you decrease the inflate value, it's less puffed. So maybe let's make it even like 0, 0 0.3. So it's just something like that. So you can see the this is getting to receive some wrinkles in the places where there's tension and if we decrease this whoa, just for a sec you can see it goes crazy but let, let it take some time to calculate and the fun thing is really that you can stop it anytime where well, the shape is kind of like the way you like it you can reset this also to get the simulation done once more and let me show you another cool thing, like there's a grab option, so that you can really grab a piece of, the, of this material. And just see how it deforms, how it shapes itself, so you can kind of like live sculpt your pillow or your fabric. As you can see it's not super fast and the geometry is not like super detailed so so you might play around also with the settings uh, a bit and with the, with an escape button you can escape the grab thing and if you stop the continuous update you can see it already looks pretty cool well we can then rotate it maybe and create some collision object for this Let's give this a collider option and this one, this one let's give a little bit negative gravity like 0 0.001 and let's try how it goes. You can see it's starting to really really slowly and I have done that on purpose because the gravity will speed things up. So dealing with small values is like safer, so that the add-on doesn't go crazy. Yeah, just make sure that you turn on uh, object collisions, because as you can see I forgot to do this, to this. Let's redo this once more, maybe. We can even give this uh, half of the inflation value and then the gravity will do the rest. And we can of course always grab it and just play around with the shape. You can change uh, like the value slide. Yeah, I kind of like it right, right now, so. Uh, so right now we got one pillow. Well, it's not looking perfectly well, but you can always add a multi-resolution modifier. And you can see it's looking pretty decent. Now the add-on really adds shape keys to the mesh, so. 
You can also use this to like tweak how much of the simulation you want to apply using the, the shape key slider. If you want to apply the deformation, uh, you just have to remove uh, the shape keys. Just remember to uh, remove the modeling cloth shape key as the last one. Otherwise, it will uh, remove the whole simulation. So right now in the scope mode, we could maybe use the smooth brush to get these, some of these intersecting parts like corrected. Yeah, so use uh, different brush sizes, different brushes to give some smaller wrinkles here and there. It's also useful to to turn on matte caps so we can see uh, the wrinkles, smaller wrinkles better. Maybe we'll also add a crease, like the stitch on the edge of the pillow. Yeah, pretty cool. So now let's start modeling our bed cover. Once again we'll start with a simple plane. We'll extrude this inset uh, the faces and give some give it some loop cuts. So we have a kind of an edge around the bed cover and I will give it the basic shape. and apply a modeling cloth option to this. So now let's quickly select uh, pairs of vertices uh, on the upper and the lower part of uh, our bed cover. Well, I do that. I'll do that by first selecting and checker deselecting some vertices and then deselecting edge uh, like vertice loops, edge loops. Maybe you can think of a better way of selecting this kind of pattern of vertices. We'll do that to apply virtual sprints to these and that will hold uh, the general shape of the bed cover when uh, simulating the inflation. So let's add virtual sprints to these uh, vertices and I also prepared a small cube of, as a collision object so I applied collision in a modeling cloth panel and let's uh, simulate the fabric, clicking continuous update. Let's maybe try uh, resetting this and also increasing subdivision level. So we can grab the fabric shape it a little bit play around with the values now let's Give it a multi resolution modifier and start sculpting. Let's first go right to places where collisions were not perfect. Let's smooth out these virtual springs uh, here because we won't be needing these, so let's flatten this. And generally, generally, like, sculpt the fabric to make it look better. 
add some deeper wrinkles. Generally it's similar to what we did with the pillow, only the mesh is just a little bit bigger. So let's quickly put things together. So I linked uh, the pillows and uh, and the bed cover to our scene. Scale it a little bit so that it fits our mattress. And I applied the shape keys and also I'll apply the mattress to our bed cover so that we have some denser geometry. And right now we can see that uh, the topology I used for the base mesh is useful us because we can now quickly add a loop cut around our bed cover and select this loop cut and just extrude this a little bit inwards so that we have a tiny like a stitch around the bed cover it looks I think this looks pretty nice now also uh, it's good to unwrap the mesh so I select all of the faces Select one face as an active and unwrap it with follow active quotes. Just quickly create bed cover material. Let's also make material for the pillows. There you go, you can also the same way create a blanket over this or something else. Just have fun and experiment with the add-on and I'm pretty curious on what you come up with. So this is how our bed finally looks like. So let's render it out quickly. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. There are more coming soon, so stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to get notified and if you make your own beds, show off in the comments, maybe give some links. I'll be happy to, uh, to check what you come up with. So see you in the next tutorials.